you, Rosemary. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joe Bard, and I am a geographer with the Cascades Volcano Observatory and also the Biogeographic Science Branch, which is out of Denver, Cascades Volcano Observatory down the street in Vancouver, Washington. So today I'll be introducing the Mount St. Helens Historic Topography Project. And so in 2022, the USGS and Portland Community College formed a cooperative agreement to engage students in creating new digital elevation models using historic topographic maps. And today I'm co-presenting with Blair Stellmuller, who's a, for a former student intern from the co-op. So I'll introduce the project, talk about why we're doing it, hand it over to Blair, who will talk you, uh, give you a tour of the process we're using to create these DEMs and uh, that we're making freely available to everyone to use to make cool new maps. So we have two goals really today. Um, the first is just to, the, for, at the USGS, we make foundational data sets for you all to download and make cool maps. So we wanna share a project we're working on so you guys can go download some cool new data. And also, um, I'm hopeful that you'll get inspired to think about how your organization can benefit from forming new partnerships like the USGS has with Portland Community College. So when you look back on your career, can you point to a pivotal moment that set your career in motion, maybe uh, perhaps your first internship or meeting an important mentor? Anybody show of hands? Is there anybody in this room who is that mentor for somebody? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, all right, all right. Yeah, for me, there's definitely a few in here. Christina Friedel over there from Portland Community College. Um, Jim Meacham over there. Um, so let's see here. Uh, so for me, it, like the, the, the most pivotal moment happened when I was at at Portland Community College as a student studying GIS, and I was accepted into a mentoring program that was a partnership between the Cascades Volcano Observatory and Oregon State University. Um, it helped me land my first internship with the USGS, and it's been where I've been ever since. This on the screen is an example of the kind of thing that I was working on when I first started. This is a LIDAR elevation of Newberry Volcano in central Oregon, which maybe Oregon's, uh, the, the Cascades' most underrated volcano, so if you've never been, you must go. Um, and so one of the really cool things about this project was I got to use the bathymetry data collected by Bob Reynolds, who is a, a geologist at Portland, or at uh, Central Oregon Community College, and he, he went out and mapped the bathymetry of East Lake and, and Palina Lake, and I got to interpolate these and patch these into this LiDAR data set. And so as I was putting together this talk, I was thinking, it's like, wow, maybe this is my first introduction to filling in the gaps in, in, in elevation data sets, and that was kind of an exciting thing, and maybe this has sort of carried me through to this point now. So a few years ago, um, the fellow who hired me at the Cascades Volcano Observatory retired, and so I took him out for his favorite beverage on a sunny afternoon just to ask him stories about his career. And one of the things I, I asked him was how he pitched my internship to leadership. And the thing that he said was, we just had to make it a win-win for everybody. And a win-win is when you and your partners obviously benefit, but that the, the benefits radiate beyond the scope of your immediate work. And so I kept this idea tucked in the back of my mind, and a few years ago, uh, there's an opportunity that came up to, to, to do a project that I thought actually would achieve this goal. And it, it seemed like we could take some steps towards fulfilling some of the DEIA goals set by the White House to engage students in paid internships, also to get some really cool work done, and to create some um, awesome products for making new visualizations of Mount St. Helens. Most folks are familiar with the May 18th, 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. However, most folks are less familiar with the fact that the, uh, the volcano actually kept erupting through 1986. And there were actually, during this period of time, there were 17 lava dome building eruptions that built the lava dome that you can see today with inside the crater. So during that time, the USGS was making maps of the evolving lava dome to keep track of the eruption. A few years ago, I unearthed a huge cache of these maps from this period that were buried in map cases around the office and in cardboard tubes that hadn't been opened since the 1990s. This one on the screen is from August 17th, 1983, and this just shows one of the snapshots of the morphological change of the volcano during this period in the eruption. And I hope that you will be able to see that these are very, very, very detailed topographic maps, um, and they are really, really stunningly beautiful in person. So these are made really for operational purposes, and you know, when I saw this thing, I immediately thought, these are amazing, we can turn these things into DEMs. Also, this is way too much work for any one person <laughs> ever to do. But if we can get students involved, we might just be able to turn this into a win-win. <laughs> and so I reached out to Christina Friedel, who is the head of the GIS department at Portland Community College, and let's be honest, also the fairy godmother of GIS in Portland. And, <laughs> and, asked if, and I kind of posed this question, if we could find some funding, do you think we could set up a cooperative agreement where we could hire some students to, um, to, to work on these maps? And so after a couple of preliminary discussions, I approached the USGS grants office um, to begin the process of the application. So with the help of the USGS National Geological and Geophysical Data Preservation Program, 
we were able to secure some funds to start making this happen. So for us, working with a community college was, was really important because um, community colleges historically serve underrepresented Americans in higher ed. And this made this really this, an ideal partnership for us because it, it fit really well with uh, Executive Order 14035, which is DEIA and the federal workforce, which challenges agencies to advance partnerships, to recruit individuals from underserved communities, and to reduce the government's reliance on unpaid internships that can really create barriers for low-income students and first-generation professionals. So like USGS, many agencies and universities have a grants office or something equivalent. And so if you are looking to find win-wins for your organization, I would urge you, even challenge you, to think about exploring some of these partnerships for yourself. And so for sure, folks who are in agencies, this, yes, definitely this. For those who are in students, when you become a member of an agency, maybe that. Um, so uh, you know, think about how these partnerships can work for you. I'm going to hand it over to Blair now to tell you how it's done. So I was lucky enough to fall into this co-op experience and get this type of career building experience. Um, so I'll just kind of back up and go through a little bit of my story. So I started like my GIS journey taking one class at a time at PCC between 2021 and 2024 while I was teaching high school science. So I was really looking for classes and experiences that would help me uh, switch up my career. And then I was just so happy to find this experience with the Cascade Volcano Observatory, getting this GIS experience, but I also have a background in geology. So it was perfect um, melding of everything I loved and what I was looking for. Um, during this time, it really gave me this new work experience, and by the end of it, I resulted in two publications with my name on it, which was incredible. My course, coursework, the labs, class activities were, of course, incredible skill building moments, uh, but it was this authentic application of those skills and tools that really gave me the boost I needed to enter the GIS workforce. So what exactly did I do for the CVO during this time? Um, so the main, one of two projects I worked on was this Mount St. Helens uh, DEM. I specifically worked on the 1983 one and the two sections highlighted in these beautiful rainbow colors are the ones I uh, specifically worked on. Um, so in order to tackle this cartographic challenge, there was four kind of main steps that I went through and I'm gonna dig into each of those a little bit um, more. The first two steps definitely took the longest. These were the big, time-consuming moments that filled many hours, uh, any time, free time I had between classes and full-time teaching. Um, this first step was uh, digitizing the line work into vectors from scanned images of the topographic maps. Luckily, Joe did the original scanning and some post-processing work to really make the lines pop. And then each map was divided into smaller tiles so that multiple students could be working on it at the same time. Otherwise, again, it would be a very impossible and time-consuming um, project. So once given a tile, I was in charge of making sure any non-topographic lines or marks were removed. So there were smudges, there were artifacts of the scanning process, there were labels that need to be taken out. Um, and we use paint.net to do that, to do the uh, initial editing. So you can see here in this step one, we use color to help track our progress, what was removed, what was kept. Uh, there was note layers to check what we'd already done, circle topographically challenging areas that we needed to go back to to figure out. Um, but this initial editing took quite a while. Once it seemed like it looked OK, the lines were clear, there was no non-topographic marks, it was time to move it into ArcGIS Pro, which was step two. So this, we used the raster to polyline tool to create the vector data, and then more errors, of course, and things needed to be fixed there. So there was a lot of like pixel size gaps between lines that had to be merged and connected. Um, and once it started looking like it was supposed to, elevation data was added, um, which let us see more errors that might need to have been fixed, and then um, topology rules were applied. So since it's topographic data, all these lines had to be continuous. They could not intersect or overlap with themselves or other lines. Of course, when you run the topology rule, a ton of errors pop up. So it's another round of editing and some fun time clicking through buttons and doing the automatic fix. Some of them can't do automatic fix. Um, but for the most part, most errors had to be resolved. When it was finally resolved, it was time to turn it into a DEM, which was probably the easiest part, just run the tool, um, and you have that final product. The last two steps, the creation of the metadata and the formal USGS publication process for this specific project, I actually didn't get to work on that much, but with the second project I worked on with the USGS, I did get to go through those steps, so I'm just going to talk about that 
project a little bit as well, even though it's separate from the Mount St. Helens one. So in addition to these topographic maps, I also got to work on a geologic map of Augustine Volcano in Alaska. So I was charged with updating an older obsolete version of a geodatabase um, to meet the new GEMS standard. If you don't work with GEMS, it's the geologic mapping schema. They strive to create a nationally uniform cartographic product, so same color scheme, symbols, make this really consistent um, through all these different maps and products. So, I was in charge of taking that data, the spatial data that was already there, creating all these tables and joins and glossaries and metadata, style files that matched all the symbols and the colors to create uh, this final geologic map. So I did get to work with the creation of the metadata for this, and I got to go through the formal review process, which was a very unique um, experience where I got comments and uh, had to resolve um, edits and fix any necessary corrections to the map before it was eventually published just this summer under Stillmuller et al. So I'm the first author, which was very <laughs> exciting for me. I'd never had that before. Um, so that was that project, um, but just kind of, to sum up this incredible experience, that wasn't just incredible for me, it was incredible for many other students at Portland Community College as well. Over the course of specifically the Mount St. Helens one, over 13 student interns uh, got to contribute to this project. Um, three maps are already published and more are in review to come. I believe there was five total in the time scale, um, time series that we were doing. So it was just an incredible opportunity for so many to kind of get that first authentic touch at real cartography and an authentic job experience. So to kind of wrap up a little bit, we're just gonna show off some of those DEMs um, that were created. And if it's been published, it has a QR code on it. Um, and if it doesn't have a QR code, it's in process. Okay. Nice. This is the starting before the dome building eruptions. And starting to build the dome. And that's it, yeah. And then, yeah, so um, we saw there was, I think, four or five maps, and we have about, I think, nine in that one to 2,000 scale. And then we're going to have about seven more that are going to be in the larger one to 4,000. So we've been really, really fortunate to work with some amazing students over time, including Bree Stewart sitting over there in the front, who's done amazing, amazing work for us. And so, um, yeah, I just want to really thank all of our students who've contributed, tons of people who helped us at USGS at PCC. And thank you so much for NASIS for having us. Thank you to the moderator for considering our talk. And so very appreciative of you all being here today and listening. So thanks so much. <laughs> and happy mapping. Yeah, so the question is, are we gonna do a time animation of the building? And obviously, yes, and you all should too, and download all this data and, and make lots of, of them. And uh, yeah, we're very excited to see that for sure, because we're gonna fill in some gaps. We've had some, it's, the way we found, we actually found the last one in the series first, and then other ones, and so there's been, you know, we've been trying to patch them together, and so yeah, we're getting, we're kind of working towards completing it more, but I'm very excited to see all of this come together in an animation. Yeah, thanks so much, y'all. Yeah.